Endo meeting Wednesday, May 15th. Um, we're going to build more pet de pet demon team. <laughs> Starting by uh uh let let's uh let uh, I I let's give the floor to Chip to ask questions. As Chip has begun exploring what even is pet demon and has questions. Let's, let's dig. Right. So so I went through the the tutorial documentation thing that's in the the um, uh, endo CLI demo directory or the the demonstrations, if you will. Um, <laughs> Welcome. Um, and and this is one of those classic cases of you go through the tutorial and it all makes sense and you kind of follow along and you think you understand it. And then um, the other day, uh, Eric kicked me a uh, an issue that was just some 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 cleanup, which is like, let's have all of these commands allow dot separated paths um, instead of just names. Um, and some of them have already had that done and there's some others that, that still need to have that done and that seemed like oh yeah that seems like completely straightforward and then i and i started looking at it and it's really like i don't understand what these dot separated paths are paths of and what are the entity and it's like i realized the whole documentation kind of presupposes a an existing uh, uh understanding of the of the basic underlying abstractions of what the what the endo demon actually is and and does and those things aren't actually explained there and i've seen now several different demos so i kind of have a a kind of a hand wavy sense of those things but i don't um you know when, but when you actually go to like make interventions in the code um Suddenly, the depths of of one's lack of of understanding become uh, uh, frighteningly uh, um, apparent. Yeah. Um, and and in particular, what if if you do like an endo list and you got this list of names, what are those names the names of? And what and when we talked about and and how do things? It, it looks like almost like a, a hierarchical namespace, except that I don't see how any levels of the hierarchy beyond the top actually ever come into existence, except that they self-evidently do exist in some cases. Um, and, and then in uh, the the uh, the ticket that um, uh, that that uh, 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 that that that, that Eric sent me, to you, yes. <laughs> which is I'm just looking it up. It's 2023 support dot delimited pet name paths. Um, there's a little. I don't know. Maybe I should just share my screen, or do you want to? Yeah, that works. Okay. Because it's just. Oops, that's the wrong button. Um. Um. There's this 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 lovely little exemplar fragment right here, and um, I think I understand this first thing, which is evaluate uh, the expression ten, and give it the name ten, and it says okay that value was ten, and it's just a number that that seems reasonably clear, um, and then it says evaluate foo, and then it foo is bound to Info.10.source, to which my question is info and <laughs> source. <laughs> yeah. These were these were concepts previously not in evidence. Um and so I I I I I I, I fling myself upon the, the 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 mercy of the court. All right. So uh there is uh it is a hierarchy. Um, and you can create arbitrary nested levels of it today um, using McHost and McGuest because host and guest are... Ah, ah so yes, very good. Um, 
So host and guest are two more uh, abstractions which are clearly foundational that are that are not defined anywhere. Yeah, so host and guest are both types of agent and agents are types of name hub. Um, directories are also types of name hub. Those that's that's basically your hierarchy right there or, or, or your class hierarchy, if you will, or protocol hierarchy. Um, the uh, name hubs are, um, name hubs are characterized by having a lookup method that takes a pet name and then returns the corresponding object and having an identify method that takes, uh, that takes a pet name and returns the corresponding identifier formula identifier. Um, yeah, I noticed. I noticed as I was playing around with these various commands that some of the you know some uh, uh, to 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 an ignorant person such as myself, some arbitrary subset of the commands would work with an unpredictable arbitrary subset of the names that are there, and it yes. looks like the things that are named need to be complicit in their own implementation of whatever logic is behind uh, yes. what these commands uh, uh, drive. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the crux of it is that all of the verbs, all uh, is that the Endo API provides an object with all the verbs for interacting with pet named things. Um, and not all of those ab ab verbs apply to all pet named things. It's, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, just a point of information. Uh, uh... Uh, perceptive viewers may have noted that the content of this issue changed, particularly what the endo eval foo command um, uh, evaluates to. Uh, that was originally something different that was incorrect. Uh, this uh, is oh, correct yeah. and how, in I, fact, will work if you run I, this locally right now. Now, now that you point that out, um, I did notice that 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 it behaved differently when I tried it, then what it said, and I, I just figured, oh, that's probably just a mistake in the documentation. Um, but yes, very good. So this this works. I was right about my details. <laughs> okay. Yes, it, it works for eval specifically, uh, right. and uh, as you can see with all of the uh, all of the to dos for most commands, it does not work. Right, and and so my my um, uh, you know I was looking around for sort of, sort of of the commands that don't yet have this path thing implemented. Um, you know which ones are the most straightforward to make interventions of? As I mm -hmm. as I slowly build up my understanding of what's going on inside, I figured I'd do the simple ones first, and then uh, having attained some level of of understanding apply that to the slightly more complicated cases. But, um, um, uh, you know, yeah. like what's the distinction between uh, eval and, uh, well, what's the difference between list show and cat, for example? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, let, let's, let's dig in a little bit. There are two, there are two layers for, for each of these things, there are two layers that have to be integrated, and some of them are easier on one. Like some of these, some of, many of these commands can be made to support pet name paths with, only with changes at the CLI. Okay, okay. And many well, of that, them. Yeah, that was my question is like, what does it even mean to do this operation that way? Mm -hmm. um, and, and also there seems to be some relation ship between um, this notion of a dot separated path and the usage of this dash dash as thing. And that's yes. another piece of the puzzle that was and remains at the moment mysterious to me. Yeah, as the as operator had to exist in the early design of the CLI because the daemon did not support pet name paths. Um, the the as operator was essentially saying, okay, look up this thing's pet name and assume that the result is an agent, right? And then and then execute commands as that agent. 
executing commands as that agent. Uh, I, I mean, I'm thinking is uh, uh, the 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 analogy I was thinking, which might be slightly oblique to that, but I don't know if it's right or wrong, was Horton. Um, the idea of there's 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 my foo, and then there's you know foo's bar, and then there's bar's baz, and um, and I'm I'm going through a a a, a series of layers of of um, you know the thing that 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 you call such and such that they call such and such other thing, that thing there, that's the mm -hmm. one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and is that is that the kind of concept we're going for, or we actually uh, have some notion of more active participation by the things in the intermediary layers of the path? Yeah, the no, it's, it's exactly as you state. That's, okay. yeah, it's the, the concept is exactly as you state and pet and dot delimited paths significantly overlap with that behavior and are simply a more generally useful concept. Okay. The dot delimited paths almost entirely obviate the need for the dash dash as, or at least for some commands, it does obviate the need for the dash dash as flag. Mm -hmm. Though for though for the purposes of providing an orthogonal API in which people do not need to have the need to think about whether they're using the dash dash as operator in the way it's intended or dot delimited paths in the way they're intended. It amounts to the same thing, but we should have both so that it, so that the, so the user does not have to switch mental models when they go from one command to the next. Right. So like it, it's the case that endo list dash dash as my friend is equivalent to endo list my friend period uh uh okay okay so what yeah one of the things that i was um uh one of the things among the many things that i'm unclear on um is is it looked to me like the various interventions to take a command which didn't previously use paths and to modify it to use paths just looking at the diffs of the things that have already been modified in that way. It looked like a fairly straightforward mechanical transformation to the code. But what was not clear to me and is still not clear to me is, so how would, how would, I, how would I go about setting up a universe in which a thing existed upon, you know, to which I could apply this, this, this modified form of the command in order to just test it and see if it's like, working. Um, and because I wasn't, once again, I think I'm still a little unclear on, on the um, uh, sort of the, the nature of the, the semantics of the underlying reality that we're constructing here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there are lots of answers to that question. One of the answers uh, is that uh, the endo command operates on some state in your home directory, right? And endo purge dash dash f dash, dash force deletes all of that and starts over from a from uh, with with a new identity and no and no knowledge, right? Yes, I, I actually found interestingly the endo where command was extremely illuminating and understanding kind of what was going on here. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and endo where log is is a a tool that is in, indispensable for debugging this thing and needs to become even more indispensable. And if, if that's a, if, if that, that can be your challenge, if you choose to accept it, uh, the, and the, <laughs> the endo log command currently only gives you the endo log, like the, the demons log itself. It doesn't give you any of the child process logs. Um, so do they have logs. They do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if you do endo spawn, and name it your baby, for example. It should be the case that you can say endo log baby and see the baby's logs. Um, I think I think I'm realizing as you're saying that, and there's another thing that I'm unclear on is the relationship between hosts, guests, and processes. Yeah, uh, each of them are 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 
yeah, so pet names refer to pet names refer to the identifiers of formulas. <laughs> and the formulas are used to construct the things that they are of their type, right? Um, and there are very few of them. It's growing, but I think that we might have gotten to the point where we might not need any more of them. Um, the, the, the formula types are things like here's um, a marshaled value. That's a new one. Um, uh, or here's an eval, uh, here's an eval formula. Here's a, a bundle formula. Here's a readable blob from the content address store. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, the, I was thinking formula was just a shorthand for a um, uh, an evaluable thing that you you stored away. So that's okay. one. That's one kind. Yeah. Okay. Eval is one type of formula. If you type endo store and then give it some text to store, it puts it in the content address store and gives you a Marshall formula identity, uh, the identifier of a Marshall formula. If you do endo store and then a file. It creates a readable blob in the content address store and gives you a readable blob formula, the identifier for a readable blob, right? Um, and then in the in demon.js, there are parallel sets of functions for constructing formulas and making values from formulas. And okay. uh, I think, yeah, I think formula itself is an abstraction that I'm puzzled by. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you take a look at types.js or types.d.ts in daemon, it has it has the union of all of the formula types in there, both in their JSON representations and yeah, they have uh, a JSON uh, representation and uh, I yeah, it's interesting. Uh, MetaMask uh, uses TypeScripts much more natively than uh, TypeScript much more natively than Agoric did. Um, and I need to shift my thinking of uh, uh, a you know type you know types dot d dot t s or whatever that basically the type descriptors as as being sources of information rather than as obstacles to maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in this case, it is definitely both. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> okay. I will, I will look at that. Yeah. So, um, so, so apropos of that, each of those formula types generates different types of objects. Those objects implement different APIs and different and have different subsets of the verbs of the endo API, um, can be interacted with, with those verbs. And uh, a formula in this case is a thing that can be stored. Formula, the formula is a, or a formula the thing that generates a thing that can be stored i'm i mean i'm 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 what is the what is the broader category of thing that the word formula denotes formula denotes a json blob that gets put onto the into the storage uh in, into your storage and then when you want the value corresponding to a pet name it first looks up the identifier of that thing and then looks in storage for the corresponding JSON blob for the formula, and then executes the corresponding incarnation code for its type. Ah, uh, so the the JSON, what is what the JSON stores is not the data, but the recipe for, for providing the data when requested. And recipe was one of the potential names for formula. Okay. We we had to choose between recipe and formula. Uh, th that's that. Formula is fine, uh, aside from the fact that it makes me think of like physicalc and <clears throat> you know spreadsheets and things. But okay. Would you rather? Uh, uh, and no, I know it's fine. It's fine. I know you would prefer it's to fine. think of how much garlic does this need, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's easy. The answer is more. More. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is very much a recipe in the sense that it is a Jason blob describing, saying, you are making a cake, and these are the things you need to make that cake. So, so okay. So then what is the relationship between demons and processes and... And hosts and guests. And one agents, of the, 
agents. Yeah. That's another thing that was very confusing. You go at the uh, this um, uh, walking through the um, the documentation, and it has you creating uh, creating this thing where you have a thing and the, the, the a thing a handler or a handle and an agent, and it's like what. I, I'm. I find that distinction confusing. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. And if we could have lived without it, we would have. Well, I I went well, along. Uh, the, 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 actually, understanding what the constraints were that caused you to to need it is probably. Um, uh, it's illuminating. Yeah. Illu yeah, illuminating. That's that's that that is a good word. Um, yeah. Yeah, what, that, is, what is an agent versus what is a handle and why do I care? Yeah, this is this is exactly the use versus mention facet of the same thing. Uh, the agent is the use facet. The handle is the mention facet. Interesting. I, I'm, I'm... Yeah, so the idea is that if I were to make a guest for chip, I would use the word chip. For the handle mm -hmm. and the reason i would use that for the handle is because whenever i send or receive mail with you i want to reverse look up the to and from field of the message and for it to expand that to your name from my pet store right, right? um and i would say chip agent would be the powers that i'm going to convey to you chip agent is is the object representing the powers that you will get and you as you as a you as a guest on my system have the ability to store things and send me messages and um and to have permissions that were granted to you previously to be remembered. Oh, oh, so this is not an agent to a thing. This is an agent for a thing. That's right. Okay. So this is this is your plug that connects you to the rest of the world that into which you have been inserted. Mm -hmm. So there's you yourself and then then your window to the to the to to the outside world to the extent that your container is allowing you to see anything. Yeah, there's there was a really amazing graphic that I want to reproduce in the comments. This is very okay, this is very this is very close to the 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 thing that um Terry Hayes and I were working on when we when I when I made the joke about nomads and then and then that that all blew up. Um, oh, I, this is one one week a couple a couple of years ago at at Fryam, um, I said, oh, we should come up with a, an abstraction called a, a nomad, just to fuck with the functional programming people. Oh yes, of course. I I am uh, glad that that's the history of that. That I did not know. Wow. Um, and and, and <laughs> to, I, I think Dean, who was there at the moment, said, "Oh, well, obviously it has something to do with mobile code." <clears throat> and and then Terry and I just started riffing on it, and we came up with this whole abstraction for this piece of this this object, which could could move from one place to another, and then when it would arrive, it would have, you know. It would be it would be given whatever its capabilities to the the environment in which it had landed, um, and there would be some standard way of representing what things it expected to see, so that you could decide whether you wanted to give them to it or not. And this is this is very much like some of the stuff that 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 we had been thinking of back at uh, Electric Communities. Um, anyway, that's all. That okay. anyway, this this feels this feels like it has some of the same flavor. I'm, yeah, and it has a lot of the same flavor to what Brian did for pet mail. Um, it turns out we're converging on very similar designs. Um, and of course, our friends at the Sprightly Institute are building almost exactly the same thing. They call it the agency. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Agency was the term that we had at Electric Communities back in, oh my God, decades ago. Um, okay, so when we say um, just let's let's just look at these these two 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 commands here. Uh, um, this just what so what do, what is make guest actually doing at this point? It is creating 
Is it just having, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm already confused, confused enough that I'm not even able to ask sensible questions. Let me tell you what. So Salen's principle applies here. <laughs> um, what my guest is doing is causing your demon to reserve two identifiers and write two corresponding formulas into your database. Uh, one for a handle and one for the corresponding agent. Now, the agent and these are entangled. This is a case. This is this is the limited case where um, locally the pet demon identifier graph is mm -hmm. cyclic. There are lim there are cycles in the case of things that have multiple facets, um, but they can't bridge the demon. Uh, they can't bridge the network. That's that's the limitation. Um, so 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 it's sort of kind of reserving so the handler. Your... The handler says, that's my agent. And the agent says, that's my handle. Got it. Um, and then the, then, then the second line there says make, and then we have the, the code for the doubler mm -hmm. and says, name that doubler mm -hmm. um, and give it the doubler agent as the thing it should talk to, to mm, get that, to its yeah. powers. Right. Yeah, that, um, that's the object that it receives in its maker. Right. And so where where in this dance does the 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 name doubler handle appear? Mm. I don't see yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. So what happens is that um what this arranges for, uh, and 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 perhaps dash dash name doubler should be dash dash name doubler dash cap, right? Uh, the, the the capability that it is creating is what you're naming doubler in this case. Um, so the and and I intend to change this for reasons I may explain on this call. <laughs> I think that we need to change this for reasons. Um, I think that these two commands should be collapsed into one for the purposes of helping the the user maintain their sanity. Um, but I'll get into that later. What's going, okay. what's happening here is that doubler.js is being turned into a bundle and stuffed in the formula store. Okay. So, so okay. the text, the text of the bundle is being created by the command line. It is being stuffed in the content address store with a store command. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're creating a make from bundle formula that refers to the bundle that we just dumped in our CAS. Um, and the formula says, use that bundle and these powers um, to create to create a value that we are going to name doubler. Mm -hmm. okay? Um, okay. so so when that when that cape when the doubler comes up and runs, um, and if you take if you scroll up a little bit and take a look at the code of the doubler, yeah, it's receiving powers, right? Those powers are the doubler agent. It's going to get the doubler agent, which is like like a guest facet, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's calling the request method. It's saying, "Hey, host, whatever is named host for me, um, which is whomever created the guest. Um, I need a counter suitable for doubling, and I want to remember the thing that I've been given with this name, my counter." This so so in this case, uh, uh, host denotes a thing which would be in the namespace of the of the um, the powers in this case the doubler agent. Correct. So doubler uh, agent dot my counter is going to exist as a as a consequence of this. Doubler agent dot my counter. Mm -hmm. So this this says. Henceforth, when I talk to you about a thing which I will call my counter, I mean this thing that you're going to give me in response to this request. Correct. Okay. And then the second argument is just right now is just an arbitrary string. Presumably, in, in this current example, it's just there for illustrative purposes. It's not actually doing anything because 
that's not like that 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 particular string is being parsed or something. Although in principle it could be. If... It is it is being presented to the user descriptively. That is the body of the message that host is going to receive. Right. Okay. So the, yes, that's the thing that we looked at in the in the in the in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Okay. I remember the, okay actually that's actually lower down in the in the example here but um that is being presented in this case we are expecting because this is this is a, a sort of a demo example is being presented to a human and the human is going to enter the name of a thing to give to um as as, as the requested power Mm -hmm. But presumably, if the entity that was um, interrogating the the message which is in the mailbox was a, a a piece of software, then we would want this second argument to be some some more structured thing that would be in some format or protocol or representation which was mutually described as by prior agreement for how we were going to represent. You know, it'd be basically a parameter passing convention of some kind um, yes. or a descriptor or a standard, you know, the, the moral equivalent of SQL or a, a JSON blob of something or, or, or what. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you would have a pro, you would represent a constraint, a set of constraints that you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, which is to say, you have immediately noticed, as I had hoped you would. That this isn't done. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Re request is in this form because this form is adequate for a demo and, and right, easy. Right. Uh, yes, this is this is a thing which 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 is good enough for a human to puzzle out what to do. Yeah, exactly. And we we need to make some decisions in the future about whether to commit to the existing API here because it is adequate for the purposes of talking to a human and create another API that's adequate for talking to a bot or make this API suitable for both. Seems hard. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, now, is, 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 it, is it baked in at this point that, that that second argument is a string or is it just an arbitrary value? An arbitrary marshallable value, I should say. An arbitrary string at the moment. It's an arbitrary string. It's a string. We can change it. Okay. We could. If I were to, if I were to, if I were to say, uh, um, pass as that second parameter and a thing which is of a different data type than string, would the world explode, or would it just like, if it, presuming it could be a thing that was serialized, serializable, would it just all flow through automatically, and it just it would be shown on the other end as whatever it. Was. We don't. I do not even know. Oh, okay, great. That's, 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 <laughs> I can try at my leisure. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I, I I can I leave this to the to the realm of undefined behavior. We have not yet even filled out the pattern inter the interface guards for any of. Okay. The okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, 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 um, and so, and so so going back to to the make guest thing. Um, I'm, I'm still. The, 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 we have to go back to your original question. Yes. How does your handle fit it, fill it, fit in this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when the, what happens there is that when the guest powers object receives the request message, uh, the request method, it has to translate into a message that is suitable for transmission, potentially over the network, mm -hmm. to the act uh, to the recipient, which is the host, right? So the first thing it does is it looks up what is the object corresponding to all caps host, right? And that's going to be a, uh, that that gives you a handle, and a handle is a capability suitable for delivering mail. It's, and it's, how did the, the the thing that's designated by all all caps host get there? Uh, when you create a guest, uh, all of the things that are all caps are things that exist and are indelible in the pet store of the thing that was created. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I figured it was some convention like that, but 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 
yeah there there's essentially two kinds of pet name that that all of these hubs have in them and it is a convention for sure hub one hub might accept any name and as as anything and another hub might have this convention of all caps means these things and lowercase means these things okay but that is also a totally unsettled realm here like there's another thing that is not done is how best to distinguish the indelible capabilities from um uh, from from the capabilities that the that the entity manages right yeah i guess i guess i, I would think of this in terms of of uh, how much of these things are um are are merely conventions um that that work because everybody's just following the convention versus how many of these things are baked into the fundamental fundamental essence of how the machinery works yeah in this particular case they are baked into the fundamental fundamental machinery of the agent types right because in this case in this case the fact that the um doubler.js request uh was re a, uh it said it said host um um that's just a string that was in, in, inserted at the, the the transmitting end but presumably there is a thing which on the receiving end had previously used that specific name as opposed to some other name um and and i guess that's what make guest did yeah make guest arranged for all caps host to mean the ent the, the party that created the guest the handle of the party that created the guest the handle of the party that created the guest now in this case i'm okay so All right, so I think I think I, this is touching on another source of my confusion, which is the endo command is talking to a a thing, which is somewhere um, uh, represented by all of these stuff that is squirreled off into this thing in my library application support whatever that Mac stuff is. Um, 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 and and hence we have that uh, uh, what was the command uh, that uh, purge or, or or whatever that essentially resets that to a pristine um, a pristine state. But there is sort of some implied top level sort of home base um, home directory ish thing, yeah. which is just sort of. Uh, it is just sort of there, um, but is not actually ex ever explicitly named. Ah. But then in the names that you put there, those are explicitly naming other things, which you can then refer to their explicit names relative to this unnamed thing, which is the, the place that you're standing. Yeah. Um, the place and... that does have a name. Yes, it does. Um, if you uh, and I, for, for the purpose, uh, this will be confusing to you later, but for the purposes of elucidating now, the name of the place that you're standing yeah. at the top is all caps agent. All caps agent oh. is a range. The first time you that, start. Okay, so that explains why if I list stuff, I get a list of things. And if I list agent, I get the same list of things. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you do endo list agent dot agent dot agent dot agent ad, ad, ad nauseum, you get the same list of things. Because it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Okay. So so it's it's uh, very much like ls dot dot from slash. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, well, actually, it's not like no. It's more like ls dot. It's that too. Yeah. Dot slash dot slash dot slash dot, and you can do that forever and not 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 move. Um, whereas dot dot will actually climb the hierarchy, and you will eventually crash I'm, into either the top or the 
last thing that you actually have permission to access. It's actually um, it's the dot dot from slash is slash. You can you can do dot dot slash as many times as you want, and it bottoms out at root. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. oh oh okay yes yes I guess that's true. Um, um, so yes, you, he slashes its own parent. Um, so so now I'm. That's so Oedipal. I. So um, my, my no, when you were sick, I said, for some reason the Oscar Mayer jingle was going through my head. Oh my! Nice. Baloney has a first name. <laughs> yeah. O F C A R. Um, sure. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so 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 make guest um, inserted into this namespace, which is named agent. Um, a, a, a thing called uh, doubler handle and a thing called doubler agent. Mm -hmm. And the things that it inserted there were what? So uh, doubler handle is the formula of a handle. Mm -hmm. The handle formula contains the identifier of an agent. Okay. That agent will be the doubler agent. Right. Doubler agent creates a formula that has among other things the identifier of the hand corresponding handle which is doubler handle mm -hmm. um it also has um it also has the identifier of its pet store it has the identifier of its main worker you basically get one free process for every guest um is is each each of these these host guest things a process or are uh, they just it, is it, or are they just sort of app, because because nothing happens until you you send a message to something, mm -hmm. um, and so we're we're once again we're in this sort of uh, single threaded so, so the, type yeah. world where in fact you could just have one process. It's just which which box is it doing its work in? This is this you uh, the the make command has a. Uh, a, a, a flag not shown dash dash worker where you can specify the name of which process you want to create in by which process you want to create in or which process you want to create the uh the, the no the process in which the thing will be made okay so the the it, it also happens to if the thing that you refer to does not yet exist it will create it and name it for you. But will it create it as an, yet another process that's executing, or will it just be a thing which is a named blob that a named it, it, it object of some type, it which is in the dictionary? It creates a worker formula. It a creates worker. a worker formula and then puts that identifier in, um, in, in your pet store. OK. OK, and the worker formula is once again, it's a recipe for creating a worker. Yeah, and that but recipe... it doesn't it doesn't actually create a worker. It creates a formula for a worker, mm -hmm. and then when you do something that that causes it to 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 yeah, what do you do with it? What do you do with a recipe? You cook you, it. You, you right. Well, we're incarnating formulas. <laughs> in, in, incarnation, and yeah. and and when you when you when you. Um, you 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 formulate the thing that the formula describes. Um, it would in that in the case of a worker formula, it would it would create a worker process. Chip aside, all of this talk of recipes and incarnation makes me feel a bit of a pang of regret that we didn't go that direction because there are so many meat puns that go with recipes and incarnate. Right, right. Well, yes, the whole the whole world of food metaphors is, is an entirely underexplored uh, domain in computer science. <laughs> um, and, and here you were claiming only yesterday that you're good at second order effects. Uh, yeah, or, I know. But not at capital M, but not at capital yeah, I, Right. I, I was, <laughs> yesterday I was talking to Eric about how how I am, uh, I'm, really, I'm pretty good at 
at, in a, a, a thinking about second order of effect, effects of so particular business uh, so ideas. For some, somewhere in here, the phrase short order cook uh, seems to... Oh, very good, Chip. Figure <laughs> the tail. Um, Long order cook, short order cook, <laughs> market order cook. <laughs> <laughs> all right well certainly the thing which 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 acts upon uh, a formula yeah I'm, I'm i'm kind of thinking maybe you should should have gone with a recipe uh because the the thing that acts upon it would be a cook um or a chef um i guess a, a chef is a cook with a fancy hat um <laughs> all right so i i think i have uh, um This is kind of weird. I think I'm still confused. <laughs> what 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 was the, what was the line? Um, uh, um, we're still confused, but at a higher level and about more important things. Um, sure. Um, um, this this was this was I think it was um, uh, I, I don't remember who it was Edward Teller or somebody like that being 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 uh, um, quizzed in front of a congressional committee about, well, you guys have spent all of this money. Um, okay, so I think I have enough to to go continue poking around and trying things and exploring and seeing what interventions I can make. I don't know that I've actually achieved full enlightenment as to what the heck all of these things are, but I think I feel more oriented. Um, so a thing that so, we, we, so I said I had about five minutes of questions and we've taken essentially the entire hour. Um, um, I, I should probably you know step back to see if there's any actual business that 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 needs to be transacted while we still have everybody here. Yeah. Um, let me just say that a way to a way that I got a grip on what this was doing while I was making it. That is probably a, an well, exercise. The, the fact that you were actually making it probably helped, but oh yes, uh, I could not have jumped into this at this time. I would have, my brain would have melted, and I, yeah, this is jumping into a thing that's half made is not uh, my forte, and um, you know, my admiration for even trying. Um, the <laughs> the uh, the thing that helped me understand what I was making as I made it was uh, essentially endo purging frequently and then want, setting up a watch uh, with find, watching find in the state directory. Basically, every command creates files under the state directory. If you do endo where state, mm -hmm. watch that directory. Um, like literally with the watch find command right uh, and then run some endo commands that shows you what state gets dropped in that directory okay um it's like so that'll show you that if you do an endo spawn it's going to create a worker formula and then you can go poke around and look at that worker formula and notice that it's actually and then it creates a worker log directory a, a directory for the worker that only contains its log it also creates a directory somewhere else with a copy of its PID, so you can go off and find out where the and actually inspect the Unix process, um, and a number of other things. Uh, the PID does not get stored in state; it gets stored in the ephemeral state directory. But you get the idea. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, okay, I think I think um, it'll be harder day. to do that now than it was then because um a lot of this isn't is written in terms of higher order commands like make make is actually doing a whole bunch of things um it, it it's and it has and it's parameterized to do different things depending on what you give it um so it, it make is the hardest command to end a cli command to understand um most of the other ones are pretty simple yeah. Okay. I'm 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 still confused, but my brain is more full than it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um so so I will soldier on and probably have 
a, a, another batch of, of, of confusing questions that parallel these the next time we have the occasion to talk. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to find a place to start where you can have some success cheaply and quickly, it's commands like cat. And that's so. that's sort of where I was thinking of starting is the things that are just like take some stuff in here, um, uh, because there's not like a lot of it's not doing um, machinations. It's not making like modifications on the structure of the universe. It's just grab a thing, spit it out. Um, yeah, and and because of that, you can lean heavily on the lookup command, which has already been been con the demons yeah. lookup command. Well, that's the thing is all of the hard work has already been implemented. Not that it was looks like it was terribly hard anyway, but but it's somebody, I, Eric, was it you? Somebody somebody did the work of, of figuring that out, and and uh, um, and and so it, it, this looked like something that that could be addressed. In sort of the simplest sort of cargo cult fashion, and and be mostly successful, but I was hoping to have more understanding than would result from doing that. So this, oh, this yeah. conversation has been very helpful. Yeah, and when you get to something like a command that takes an optional worker argument, things are going to get hard, and I will not have answers to all of those questions. Oh, good. Well, well, um, <laughs> um, that that the I look forward to the day when when. Uh, when I can I can be confused at your own level of confusion. Yeah, it's it's not far off. Uh, <laughs> I, I a lot of a lot of the work up to this point was me trying to figure out where the edges of the design space were. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around the 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 persistence model that's that's uh, um that's lurking under the hood here. Mm -hmm. Um, because one of the things that, that we're currently discussing in, in the OCAP kernel effort that we're embarking upon at, at MetaMask is, is what's our stance on persistence and what does it mean? Um, um, so mm -hmm. this is, this is like, this is yet a different branch of that tree of possibilities there. And I, yeah. and I haven't figured out is this, is this actually one of the branches we were already doing is just being used in a particular way, or is this a whole new thing? And I so don't. From, from Mark's point of view, this is a whole new thing. Okay. So Mark, Mark's take on this is that this, that there is a spectrum or rather angles. There are degrees between orthogonal and manual persistence. Right. Uh, and uh and we seem to be like finding all of them. <laughs> the like the orchestration API over here at Agor Agoric is going off and figuring out about a new kind of persistence model for async flows, which are like yet another like a, a finer granularity of log based replay within an orthogonally persistent system standing on top of baggage well uh, yeah and... i mean well there's also like the excess snapshot which is a a form of orthogonal persistence but it's mostly done in support of being able to build things that aren't orthogonally persistent it's just a way to this is your Short-term computation can stop and resume. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I think of snapshots as being perfectly orthogonal, persistent. It gets well, weird when you do upgrade. <laughs> yeah, but but <laughs> once you're in that world, now you're you're having to think about it all the time anyway. So the question is, if you were just doing just all you ever did was manual persistence, um, um, then what you had is your ephemeral state only lasted as long as your computational process existed and what the orthogonal persistence stuff does is it allows that to to the it allows you to virtualize the the existence of the ephemeral state over a longer mm -hmm. period of time and through less reliable hardware and and yeah, start yeah. and stop but it's it's still logically a single ephemeral yeah so then then the interesting thing is that with within the context of a zone with exos and um and some persistent state 
all of the things that we do in baggage for upgrade on the Agoric chain are analogous to a things that we can do on top of the manual persistence within the pet demon because right. you do have a persistent store and yeah okay. um, but yeah. there's literally a store value method in right. every guess which could be used to do essentially something analogous to baggage maybe even exactly on the same baggage foundation okay. Yeah, I mean the one thing which is really, really different is, and this this just is more in the the execution model of you're driving all of this through the endo CLI where you're doing sort of each of these sort of micro operations, which is an entire sort of Unix command execution cycle, um, and so the whole startup and shutdown of that is a much more expensive, higher overhead kind of thing to do than um, um, than um, uh, just you know executing by the way mm -hmm. who is bone skull that's chris hiller okay chris hiller and zb are working on endomote together okay i just it was just this name this person is often there for these meetings so it's like who is that yeah 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 uh, okay yeah, we'll... um and so, <laughs> so so all right. So okay, I'm I'm so I'm going to go play some more and and I will um I may I might uh, ping you prior yeah. to the next waiting a whole rather than waiting a whole week. Um do we have do we have a Slack connection that we can do directly between us like you and me now? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. um yeah, you can find yes. my handle and harden metamask and chat directly with me. Okay. Okay, then then we should be good. So I can I can ping you. I think you can probably add Chris and in Slack since since our orgs have a bridge. Right, you might be able to reach me without any. Yeah, I, I know that works because I got I got uh, a lovely note from um, um, uh, Michael Fig when when I joined that channel. It was it really made me feel nice and warm. Um, okay. Oh, speaking of cooking metaphors, this is a complete change of subject, but just Chris will appreciate this, and Eric, you might too. Do you know about the half bakery? I don't actually actually know if it even still exists. I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. Yuda Degener, who is uh, Matt Blaze's significant other, created a, 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 a sort of a social network website for when you have some idea and you think it's kind of a cool idea, but you just don't have time to mess with it, um, you put it out there on the half bakery for other people to do whatever they do with it. And it's so it's this whole website full of people contributing all of these half-baked ideas. Um, yeah. It's really yeah. wonderful. We call that Twitter, or we called that Twitter in the before times. Yeah, no, no, this is much, much sillier and much deeper than Twitter. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if it's even still exists, but it was a great thing. It sounds. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. All right. So now, uh, what before you leave, um, do you happen to know a public IP address that can do SSH forwarding for random losers? <laughs> no? Okay. So I suppose we need to get a VPS with a public IP if we wanted to do that. Yeah. That's our next topic. How to rescue our demo from the clutches of tail scales vagaries. Indeed. Um, yeah, should we keep, uh, should we record our, um, uh, I suppose tribulations? That, uh, I don't know. I think, I think that the rest of this meeting is likely to be boring. Um, and we will, for those of you just, uh, <laughs> viewing this after the meeting, we will see you at the demos. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>